hello everybody welcome to my youtube channel today i am going to explain you useful sales techniques in efficacy analysis for oncology study so this is the class one so upcoming sessions i am going to explain more in details okay so first of all we have to know so what is cancer so cancer is characterized by abnormal and uncontrollable cell growth so this is nothing but uh, you know division of the cells you know so in an abnormal way in the body itself so that is called cancer so cancer you know the characteristics of cancer is invasion and metast metastasis cancer cells can invade nearby tissues that is invasion so ability to spread to other parts of the body through the bloodstream or lymphatic system is called metastatic cancer okay so these are two types of cancers so analyzing oncology studies is a challenging due to complex design and independent of study within the oncology so oncology majorly thing but you know dealing with the cancer related therapy so those uh, study designs and you know so the analysis and the saps and endpoints so most of the times you know little bit challenging so here statistical programmers are generated oncology data sets and outputs and figures you know based upon the sap and you know so the mark shells and specifications okay so some of the programmers feel you know little bit tough find you know so most of the programmers you know having uh not having a proper knowledge about the oncology studies how to create the data set and how to derive the data sets and how to create the tfl so this ppt onwards i'm going to explain step by step of about the oncology studies designs as well as the programming part so introduction of the oncology studies in this uh, video so there are many different ways oncology and therapeutic field these are some of the key points i'm going to explaining in these sessions okay so first of all we need to understand what is the study end point so what is the primary objective what is the end point of the study so in oncology study the most commonly used end points are objective response rate so next one is overall survival third one is progression fee survival and fourth one is quality of life so these are the main end points most of the oncology studies having okay so first one is objective response rate what is this objective response rate nothing but proportion of the responders those are nothing but complete response or partial response among all eligible subject for example 100 subjects are there having clinical trial so in that how many subjects having the response of complete response or partial response divided by total number of subjects it will give you the proportional so that is called objective response rate so one of the study having this objective response rate as a primary objective that is the the study is the phase 2 open label multi center study single agent of agelastin patients with relapsed cutaneous t cell lymphoma so this is a one type of t cell cancer lympho uh, lymphatic cancer so that cancer cured by using agelastin a drug so that study primary objective is to determine the overall objective tumor response rate okay so we can discuss this in detail in upcoming session but here just i am giving overview about what is endpoint what the, how many types of endpoints there in the oncology study so this is a one type of endpoint that is objective response rate so here you can see the calculation so reported the percentage of patients who achieved complete response or partial response divided by total number of patient one of the example a treatment regimen a achieve response 40 percent it means 40 percent of the patient experienced either complete response or partial response of the treatment okay so second end point of the studies are overall survival overall survival nothing but the name itself showing survive 
so overall survey os so that we can calculate from the randomization to the death okay so we have to calculate the time duration so from the subject randomization to the death so how much time it will take so that is called overall survival how much time the subject is survived from the randomization to the death so third end point is progression free survival so the name itself showing survival progression progression means something increasing so pfs we can call it as short form time from the randomization to disease progression or death so some subject having so disease may be progression means increasing or some subjects are death so some subject having both some uh, some time later after taking our drug the cancer was disease was progressing then some of the days the subject might be died so which one happen earlier that date we can take as a progression free survival so time from the randomization to the either disease progression or death so if the both were happened to the same subject which one happen earlier so that we can take as a progression free survival okay so if the death was happening so after that one there is no uh, happening of disease progression right so progression happen or death was happening so which one happen earlier most of the time we will take that date as progression free survival so one of the study having randomization phase 3 study so mrtx study so that study already treated with one of the drug docetaxel with the lung cancer related drug okay so that's primary objective of that study is progression free survival as well as os two objectives are achieved or not for the drug they will test on that project so one of the other end point is quality of life some of the time so always we are treating the drugs to get you know quality of the life right so better life and you know uh, the subject you know uh, either increasing the lifespan either reducing that the disease so many times so here we have to increase the quality of life so it will either decrease or increasing with the disease but we can uh increasing the lifespan with the quality okay so there is a eq5d a standard tool is used to healthcare to measure the patient health related quality of the life in a different domains okay so eq5d so mobility we will check the mobility of the patient the patient is able to move around self care the patient is able to perform self care activities usual activities patient is able to engage daily activities such as work study household chores and fourth one is pain or discomfort the presence and severity of the pain and discomfort anxiety or depression so these are the uh, we have a score card is there so we will tick the card and we will take the average of the score and based upon the score before treating the drug after treating the drug so we will check that score and we can say that the quality of life of the subject was increased due to using this drug okay so this is for today session so we will uh, you know i will explain the remaining information upcoming session thank you so much guys bye